Hi CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today I'm going to teach you how to make all different kinds of sizes of daisies. Um, so this is done with the bullion stitch. I've done this before so you might be familiar with it but it's not exactly like a normal bullion stitch. It's a little bit of a variation of it um, but it makes beautiful flowers. It's a beautiful stitch to learn and these daisies are really great. So let's get into our materials. So for today we're going to be using a smaller hook than I normally do. This is a size E or a 3.75 hook. Okay. And then I'm going to be using a smaller yarn. So this is like a amigurami yarn I'm using here. Um, it's by Red Heart and it comes in like this little wheel where you can make these animals. But I never really use it for that. I just really love the yarn. Um, and so I'm going to be using that for the middle of the flower. And then I have some baby sport weight yarn from Bernay that I'm going to be using, which is the white. Okay. You're also going to need a darning needle and, you know, <laughs> It's okay if you have a bigger darning needle, but since we're using smaller yarn and a smaller hook, then it would be beneficial to use a smaller darning needle to work in your ends. You also will need a pair of scissors. Now I do want to say real quick, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notify me bell below so that you can get notified of my future videos. And please share my videos. That helps more than anything and I really appreciate it guys. Okay, so first of all, I want to show you the back. The back of these are beautiful as well. I mean, to me, I really love this honeycomb look on the back as well, which is the reverse side of your work. Um, but you'll see in some of these where I've knotted off my work and that's because I'm going to be actually using this for a painting. So these are going to be stationary. They're going to be, be um, painted on the back. So these will never come undone. But if you are using these for any kind of applique, for a hat, for a blanket or anything like that, it's going to be really important that you work in your ends so that they don't come undone. And I'm going to show you how to work in your ends for this as well, because it can be a little bit tedious when you're making stuff like this and you want to know exactly how to do it. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with a magic circle. If you don't know how to do any of the stitches in this video, in the description box below you can find a beginner video, okay, that will teach you how to do all of this. So we start off with our magic circle and in the middle of our magic circle we're going to do six single crochets. And six and then you're going to tighten up and then you're going to start increasing so what I like to do now you can put a stitch marker right here in your last stitch right now if you want to but I like to just go ahead and count around we're gonna do two stitches and I mean two single crochets in each stitch all the way around so working in the round so I'm not gonna slip stitch to close I'm gonna go right into this first single uh, crochet here and I'm going to put two single crochets one and two and then I'm going to do that all the way around and since we had six I know I need 12 now so I'm just going to count so that was two then I go in the next one and put two so that's three and four five and six seven and eight, nine and 10, and 11 and 12. Okay. And so that's all I'm going to do for this one. That's all I'm going to do because that's all I want right now to show you is how to do 12 petals. But if you wanted to make it larger, you would keep increasing. So you would go into your next stitch and put one single crochet and then go into the next and do two single crochets. Then go into the next and put one single crochet and then go into the next and do two single crochets. Keep doing that all the way around and you'll have a stitch count of 18. 
And then if you want to make it even bigger, you could go into your next stitch and put one single crochet, go into the next, put one single crochet, and into the next, put two single crochets and repeat that all the way around and you should have a stitch count of 24. So that's just basic increase. Um, and like I said, if you have any problems with this, not only do I have a beginner video below, but I also have an increase and decrease video. So I'll link that below in case you have any trouble with that, okay? In case you wanna make a really big one. But um, just to make this one, we're gonna go ahead now and this is the way you would do for each one of your um, flowers, no matter what the size. You will go into your next available stitch and you will make a slip stitch to close the inside of your daisy. And then you will cut off, leaving enough to work in. And then you will simply pull through and do a chain one to close and then tighten up. Okay, and so that is the, the end of the middle of the daisy. Okay. okay, so this is an interesting thing about this work. The bullion stitch, the way it's worked, you want that front part of the stitch to face this way, so you actually need to work from the back of your work. So go ahead and flip your work over, and you're gonna start, you can start anywhere you want, but I like to start right here where we finished, and I'm gonna go through the back loop of my work only. And this will just cause it to recess a little bit. You don't have to do that. If it's easier, you can go through both loops. But I'm going to go through the back loop, pull up, and do a chain one to pull my, my other white color in, tighten up. And then we're going to work on the actual bullion stitch, okay? Now to do that, I'm going to show you some easy tips for this. It is a little bit of a difficult stitch. So if you're new to this, just kind of try to pay close attention. So I'm going to keep the loop on my hook pretty loose like this. I don't want it tight up against my hook. If it's tight, it's not gonna work. So keep it a little bit loose, but not messy. And now we're gonna work around our hook, working a little differently than we normally would. So normally you would pick up your yarn like this and go into your next stitch. But you're actually going to work this way over your yarn, your hook. So again, you would normally do this and you're going to go like this. Okay, and you're going to put 10 loops around your hook going that way. And you're going to do it loosely, so keep your hands loose and your tension loose, and this loop loose, okay? So we're gonna go around 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And you see how I'm pushing that back with my index finger. Then I'm gonna go in for my 11th loop, but I'm gonna stop there and I'm just gonna hold it at the top of my hook. I'm gonna hold this piece right here and then I'm just gonna pull down and push up all of this at the same time. And then it's gonna go through everything. It's gonna look a little messy, but don't worry about it. It's gonna look beautiful. Then you're gonna go into the next stitch working in the back loop only if you can and you're going to pull up and do a single crochet to hold it into place, okay? And then you're going to do that again. So you're going to, right after you single crochet in this next stitch, you're going to go over working loosely around your hook 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. And then for the 11th, just wrap around like you were going to do that again, but you're gonna hold this little piece here, push up and push down at the same time, pull through, go through your next back loop and do a single crochet. Okay, so let's do that again, keeping this loose, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then for the 11th, wrap around like you were going to do that again. Then you're gonna push up on all of this, pull down on your hook, hold that with your thumb, and then pull through everything. Then go through the back loop of your next stitch if you can find it, and do a single crochet, okay? 
So it's coming together nicely. We're gonna do a few more together and then um, we'll stop and you can work on it. Again, keep this loose, this loop right here loose. Again, we're working this way over our yarn. We're gonna do that 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then go up like you were going to do in the 11th one, but you're not, hold it with your hook, hold this little piece with your thumb, push up and push down all at the same time. Then go into the back loop of your next stitch and do a single crochet. And so that's what it looks like so far. That's exactly what it should look like. And that's what it looks like on the back. So let's do one more together, okay? Keeping our loop loose, working around loosely, we're going to go around our hook this way 10 times. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Go around for the 11th one, but don't go all the way. Hold with your hook, pull this piece with your thumb, then go down and up all at the same time. Then go into the back loop of your next stitch and work a single crochet. Okay? So that's what it looks like. If you need to rewind or anything, or if I'm going too fast, please change your settings in your uh, for your YouTube and it'll slow down the video a little bit. Um, and also you can rewatch this, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this around for camera. And then when we get to the last, I'm gonna show you how to close up and how to work in your ends, okay? So I'll see you in just okay, a Okay, so we've worked around and we have our 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. You could go ahead and finish here and go over and slip stitch, but I think that it leaves too much of a space there because of the way these stitches are worked. So I work one extra. Now being that you're working in the back loop, it can be kind of hard to find this it was hard to even define this last one but just work in what I would like you to do is work into the back loop of the first one that you did so when you first did that back loop just work into there okay and so we're gonna do one more together I've got my loop my loop uh, loose on here also the more that you do this um, you can do it a little bit tighter. I just wanted to show you how to do it easily. So I'm just gonna do it a little bit tighter and show you so, because the more you practice, the easier it gets. You still wanna keep it loose, but you could do it not so loose. Um, so uh, then you won't have to be so careful with, with it. But so I'm gonna go around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. And then I'm going to pull down, pull up, and see it went through just fine even though I did it tighter. I just wanted to show you that. Um, okay, and so then I'm gonna find this stitch where I worked right there before. I'm gonna go right into there, pull through, and do a single crochet, okay? And then I'm going to simply go into the base of this stitch right in between, right there, and I'm going to do a slip stitch to close. Then I'm going to cut off and tie in. Just do a chain one to close, okay? And this is what it looks like. And you're left with these pieces here to work in and then these in the back. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go ahead and bring these pieces to the back. So I'm gonna pull my hook through and just pull that yellow out the back because that's where I wanna sew it in. I don't wanna sit it in through the front. Sew it in through the front. So pull that all back to the back. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, and so then I can turn this over. Like I said, if you're using this as just stationary, then you can tie these off. You don't have to work them in, but if you are going to be um, using this as any kind of applique, then we do need to work them in. So I'm gonna take my smaller darning needle that I have, and I'm going to go ahead and work these in, and I wanna show you how to do this. So you're simply going to go through the back of your stitches. You don't want these to show through the front and mess up the middle of your flower. So what I'm gonna do is use the rule of three, but I'm only gonna go through my back stitches, making sure to just catch the back of them. So one, two, 
And then I'll go another way and go through the back here. Two. And then over here, catching those back loops. And three. And then you can cut off. Okay, and then you would work these exactly the same way, but I do want to show you how to do this up at the top where the white is. So you would put this onto your darning needle. Huh. Well, that's nice. I just pulled that all apart. Okay, and then you're just going to go right through right here at the top where the stitch is to bring it back down. And then you're just gonna work through the sides of the petals like this. One, two, and three. You just don't want it to mess up your petals at all and then you can cut off. And you would do the same thing with the other white and the other yellow, okay? So again, this is how you make these cute little daisies using the bullion stitch or the variation thereof. And you can make all kinds of different sizes. This has also worked just to tell you, so you know how we wrapped around the hook 10 times? I actually ended up using a, um, um, a Tunisian hook because I could go further down for this huge one. And I actually did, I think like 21 uh, rounds around my hook, pulling the loops around my hook. I did 21 for these. So that's another reason why those petals look so huge. So that's another thing you can do for this um, to really make it your own. Um, because, but I had to use a other hook because this one wouldn't hold the 21 stitches before it got down here, okay? So just keep that all in mind. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments or you need some help or anything, you can obviously find me below in the YouTube comments section, but you can also find me on my Gmail if you're not comfortable with that, or you can hit me up on Facebook, TikTok, um, Instagram, um, all of those places, um, and I'll be glad to help. And you can also show me uh, the pictures of your finished work. I really love that. Okay, guys, so happy crocheting. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.